am Scott Mendes, president and founder of Western Harvest Media, and what a, what a privilege and an honor it is to be coming to you today from the Western Harvest Ministry headquarters here in Weatherford, Texas. As you know, in these interviews, we like to bring to you exciting testimonies from the professional rodeo uh, sports arena, as well as the music industry and ministries in general. So. I'm really excited about my uh, interview guests today, and I want to bring them to you and let them share what God is doing uh, in their life and their ministry. With me today is Jeff Copenhaver. Jeff, how are you? Hey, I'm great. Thanks, Scott. Excellent. I want to brag a little bit on Jeff, and he's going to introduce our friend, Leon Cliff. How are you, sir? Hey, doing well. Awesome. Well, I know these guys really good. I'm going to stand back here for the next few minutes and let you... Uh, a little bit about what they're doing and some of the things that God is uh, getting ready to explode in their ministry. Jeff is a world champion calf roper in 1975, dear friend of mine, a mighty man of God, and uh, it's always exciting to be around him. He's full of energy and passion, and uh, it's, it's just real excited to see what God is doing in your life. So with that, Jeff, tell us a little bit about what's been happening. Well, uh, I want to tell you quickly about Leon. Leon is... Uh, he was the opening act for the Supremes at one time. And the Doors, and a whole bunch of other names that go on and on and on. And so he's been a real blessing. Uh, I prayed a few years ago about uh, having a key partner in the ministry that would just, you know, that you could link up with. And he brings the uh, great music talent and, and uh, prophetic words and just uh, a, a, lot of, a lot of giftings in him. And so you're in for a treat to to hear from Leon today, but uh, Leon and I just went on a, uh, a trip with uh, two places, and we call it a day for champions. We were in Canadian, Texas, and Hugoton, Kansas, and it was a blast, and, and just tell you quickly, a day for champions uh, starts with uh, what we call Rock and Rope, and Rock and Rope is a free timed event clinic, and we start 8, 9 o'clock in the morning, and we have free barrel racing, team roping, calf roping, breakaway, dummy roping. If kids have never done anything in the Western world, then we get them roping a dummy, and they have a blast with that. And then Leon did music, and it, I mean, we had a blast. And then that night, uh, that night at the Day for Champions is a God Wants You to Win meeting, which is taken after the devotional that I wrote called God Wants You to Win. And uh, we had a blast for that uh, with those at those two meetings. I'll let Leon tell you a little update on some of the happenings there. Come on, Leon. Let's, All right. Let's okay. Well, first I want to say that it's good to be with you today. It is. Scott. It's good to be out at this anointed place out here where uh, the ministry of the Lord goes on right here. Yeah. And uh, But I'm just a little upset at you because, you know, when you uh, always uh, mention who I've played with, and you don't mention any country singers. You don't mention Johnny Cash. And, there you go. And I was uh, Roger Miller's bass player. I yeah. Mean, who are the Supremes, you know? <laughs> well, I think the Supremes are cool. Yeah, yeah. And the no, Doors, I mean, you know, back in the rock and roll days. But anyway, we had a great time up there in Hugoton and the Canadian. And I will say this about my friend Jeff Copenhagen. I call him Cowboy because that's what he is. But, you know, the thing is that I find out about him is that he really has a heart uh, to reach out to people and to set people free. That's our heart, isn't it? To set the captives free. And you ought to see this guy. Well, I mean, sometimes, uh, can I reveal the thing about your shirt here? Okay. Sometimes when he ministers, he wears a Superman t-shirt underneath his other shirt. And it was a funny thing. We were in Hugerton, and, and he was he was rambling around exhorting people and carrying on and everything. He explodes. If you want to ever see somebody explode, he explodes. Anyway, he says, you ought to not just take a little little drink, a little sip of water of the Holy Spirit. He said, get it all over you. And he started pouring it over his head and everything. And it came down here and it came down and it wet his shirt. And all of a sudden, the Superman t-shirt just went, mm. <laughs> It wasn't it was, planned. It wasn't planned. <laughs> but anyway, yeah, people were blessed, and uh, uh, I'm really proud of this guy because he spends a lot of time with all of these kids. And this day for champions is just that, showing the kids and people that they are champions in the sight of God. And so are you, and so are we. And so we're, we're just uh, forging ahead with the things that God has in store for us. And... Uh, 
good to be here. Yeah. Good to be here. Here you go. Awesome. Thank you guys very much. Well, you know, these interviews are just kind of informal, having a, a good time and good fellowship. Uh, I'm excited. I agree with you. Jeff is the guy that you want to be around. We, we've been blessed, Jeff and I. Yeah. Uh, just a real quick story. When I was a young child here in the Dallas-Fort Worth, my mother, as you know from past interviews, was from Fort Worth. and I didn't have a dad down here. We were going through some tough times. And my mom just did some research, and she found out, and she wanted me to seek the things about God in the Western world. And from my dad's side, of course, I had all the legacy of my grandfather being a turtle and a gold card member. And so I wanted to rodeo. My mom had no means or any ways of, of allowing that to happen. But she let her fingers do a little bit of walking through the Yellow Pages and found Jeff's ranch in Granbury. And uh, drove up and literally, I think Jeff was rodeoing up in Canada uh, that spring. And, and uh, my mom got me introduced to Jeff's ranch manager. And that little window of six months in my life of hanging around with uh, Bob and Ruby Hibbs uh, really impacted my life. And even to this day, you know our vision is to, to connect uh, disadvantaged youth and uh, children that are seeking God to connect them with ranch owners and to put those programs together to develop character. So Jeff has always had a, a really close place in my heart, not only for his using his world championship as a, as a, as a, as a man of God, but his heart to help the youth in the Western world. And so, Jeff, thank you for all that you do. Uh, that's real exciting. Uh, been to Guatemala. You've just been around the world for God. Tell us a little bit about the current things that God is doing uh, in your ministry. You guys are a blessing here to Western Harvest, but you guys are going out and doing a lot of stuff. I know you're getting ready to do some uh, Internet broadcasting as well. Right. Tell us a little bit about your vision. Well, we're, uh, I'm working on a... a God wants you to win number three, and uh, and it's going to say on the front, uh, especially you know for kids, and it's really pointed toward kids. Uh, on the inside of that book, it says there's a, a ten, ten steps on reaching your dream, and it's called your dream plan, and uh, it, it just needed you know, and, and it just goes step by step. I want or I want to interrupt myself and say this about you, Scott. If when I was growing up, when I was six, seven, eight, nine, ten, and I had heard about the Lord back then, uh, if I'd have had a Scott Mendes to look up to, someone that's, you know, you're saying that about me, but I'm going to shoot a double back at you that took your championship and has used everything about that that you were in rodeo, truly a champion in rodeo, and then and taken it for God and and that ran with it. And, but if I had somebody like you to look up to when I was this tall, I wouldn't have had the wasted years that I, you know, yeah. that I had. And so it's to me, it's so f much fun for all of us to to be serving the Lord and then come up with creative ideas. You know, in answer to your question, we're going to. Uh, I've been believing God, and so has Leon. For we need youth, Lord. We need strength because uh, the door's open right now to go to Costa Rica this month. I, and have schools down there where we can share the Lord and some other open doors. Uh, Kenya, Kenya, Africa, we sent our books over there. You know what's amazing around the world, and it was prophesied years ago by uh, Smith uh, uh, Wigglesworth. Wigglesworth. He passed it. I was actually at the meeting uh, where Smith, uh, Smith Wigglesworth told David Duplessis, who's gone, you know, of course, both of them are, and he uh, David Duplessis gave this word to Murray McLeish. Now, Murray McLeish is a pastor of a 2,000 people church at that time in Eugene, Oregon. But the word was this, and I'm, I'm sure a, a lot of you have heard this, but uh, Smith told David, he says, I just feel uh, from the Lord that in the very end times, one of the three groups that, that God's going to use in an incredible way are the Cowboys. And, you know, and to me, it's the modern-day version. You know, the fishermen that Jesus touched were just kind of, a, I'm sure, just a bunch of old cussing fishermen, yeah. you know, hard-working, just everyday real people. Well, then, here God, all these years later, now he has a group of people, cowboy people. And I believe the obvious that he's using us is because we're not in this to to build a church, a ministry, a reputation, and that. No. We just we were minding our own business, heading down the trail. Leon was down the music trail, and Scott was going down the bull riding trail, which is too tough for us, dude. That's for sure. And uh, and we had an encounter with the Lord Jesus Christ, 
And so, I mean, but we're just, so we're just ordinary real men, but we have this encounter, kind of like Paul, he got knocked off his donkey, bro. Uh, and so, and now God is just, God must have a sense of, sense of humor, because he's using us. And, uh, but you know, I know he has nations for us to go to. Uh, we're trying to plug in. Scott, you do so good on the media, what you're doing in the movies and the uh, internet and all the technological stuff. Look, I can barely run my iPhone, but I am kind of proud of that. It's starting to work. <laughs> but uh, I just think there's great things ahead. I want to encourage everyone watching this. This may sound trite or kind of uh, a little packaged or, or corny maybe, but I tell you, in the depth of it, it, it it's, it's none of those things that truly, that God loves you, whoever you are watching this right now. God loves you so much. You're his favorite. I don't care if your folks were prisoners, you never knew them. I don't care if you were that tall and you were on uh, exposed to crack cocaine. It doesn't matter. God loves you so much. But it goes past that. You are his special champion. You're, you know, you're, look at these guys and their giftings. This guy's an incredible uh, singer and musician. He just, the Spirit of God gets all over him, just like Scott when he gets on the movies and does all these things he does. God just falls down. Well, that's how God wants to use you. Yes. yes. It's not, it's yes, not right. us or Billy Graham or somebody else. No. For, you know, that's all nice. But it's you that he loves. Yes. It's you that he longs to, to wrap his arms around. And for you to realize that you are his special champion, and he wants you to go for it. Yeah. That means he go wants you to believe him for great things, right. do great things. When we all get to heaven, we're going to celebrate over all the people that came into the kingdom because you made a difference. Right. Well, you know, it's, it's funny that you should talk about that. I know I get a sense when I'm out ministering in the marketplace and around the country that we've really kind of missed a generation and we're without fathers. Yeah. And so our ministry is a lot to the youth, but we have the connection with the fathers to encourage them to be all that God created them to be. And our country has just been weakened at its right. fabric and its foundation. Yeah. And so, you know, we do a lot of the media. You know about the American Cowboy Network that's coming out. Yeah. Western Harvest Media will be the in-house production to do that. And we're going to come at you with a lot of original content but the whole purpose behind a lot of this is to get back to the foundations of what God designed this country. There was a blessing on this country. And, and we yeah, as people man. have allowed yeah. Yeah. in passivity, we allowed that to be yeah, yeah. removed. And so tell us a little bit about the entertainment industry then versus now and, and where you're going with Jeff. Cliff. Well, let, first let me just say that uh, uh, Jeff has a website that <coughs> we would like for you to go to. JeffCopenhaver.com, is that it? That is. And uh, we are starting, to, he and I are working together, and we're starting really, uh, hopefully, one of the first cowboy churches online, and that's what we're asking Scott to help us with. Uh, but you know another thing we didn't mention about this guy here? He was the founder of the first cowboy church in America in 1986. They founded the first cowboy church, Bull riding arena and Billy Bob all come full circle. <laughs> it all come full circle, right? But uh, you know, it's the cowboy churches I think that uh, people are looking for. They may not wear a hat, they may not wear boots, but they got a cowboy heart. Mm -hmm. You know, and they got a, that that simplicity right. of wanting the real Jesus mm -hmm. to please stand up. You know. Uh, but anyway, we're proud of that. Amen. And, yeah. and getting started on yeah. that. Uh, I just, uh, hey, I just fell into the music industry uh, many years ago, and uh, uh, I couldn't drop all the names. It's uh, kind of ridiculous after a while. I lived in Hollywood, and uh, I was Roger Miller's bass, bass player, and I was leader of the Good Time Singers from the Andy Williams show, and I mean, the names go on and on. When you're living that world, you play in that world. But you know, it wasn't something that uh, was satisfying me. I stepped outside a honky talk one time in uh, uh, Las Vegas, and I I was raised, I was saved when I was six years old, and fell away and, and fell into sin and everything. And uh, I walked out that alley one night and I said, uh, Father, uh, I know I'm not living right, but I just want you to know that I love you, and I'm 
just asking for you to help, help me get out of this. Well, God helped me get out of it. And I've started pastoring churches. And, and uh, God, see, that's your message. That's our message. Is God has a plan for your life. Right. God has a plan. No matter where yeah. you are, no matter what you've been through, all things work together to good for those who love the Lord. They're called according to His purpose. And so never, never, never give up. Right. First things first. Isn't that right? Get back to God, right. and he'll show you the way. But that's about all I have to say about my past. Amen. That's the past. I was reminded just the other day, you guys will appreciate this. And You know, kind of new level, new devil. We're working in a lot of media, and so we ask right. you that are watching to pray for our ministry and my family and right. Jeff's uh, family and Leon's family and their ministry uh, going to that next level. But I was reminded just driving down the road the other day, when the devil reminds you of your past, Inform him of his future. Yeah, I Amen. Like that. Amen. I like oh, that. Okay. And tell him about your future, too. <laughs> <laughs> yes, exactly. Well, as you can tell, we're good friends, and we could sit here for a long time, but we want to keep this interview short and sweet. And I do encourage you, if you get a chance, to go to jeffcopenhaver.com. If you get a chance, and if you need to write in to us from westernharvestmedia.com or even westernharvestministries.com, we carry some of his books, and we'd love to ship those to you. They're free of charge. Uh, if you get out to a rodeo, you may see some there. But pray for us. Uh, ask for your support. And, and, and like Leon just said, God has a purpose, a plan, and a destiny for your life. We pray that this interview has encouraged you and blessed you. And so until we see you down the road, God bless you and your family and all that you